I'm joined by Amanda Bell, who is slated to fight India Gomes at Invicta FC 15. And unfortunately, weight complications canceled that fight on India Gomes' part. And I got to ask right off the bat, Amanda, how you doing? We're a couple weeks removed. How you feeling? I'm doing all right. Uh, I've just kind of gotten back into the swing of things here at home. Uh, just back into work and uh, I took a couple days away from the gym just to get caught up from the jet lag and everything and then just back in the gym pretty much you know there's no fight no injuries so I'm not resting necessarily I'm just trying to keep strong and keep in shape and ready for the next fight. Absolutely. And we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but I wanted to kind of talk a bit about your backstory here. Um, I noticed that uh, you started in uh, Shotokan Karate in uh, Tai Chi, and that kind of led to your uh, combat sports career. Um, you know, what was it about uh, MMA that really kind of drew you to the sport? You know, I, I don't know. I, I had a promoter in the area that I was letting, living in at the time um, offer to hell let me come set up one of the shows and put together the cage and so forth. And so when I got into the kit, to the show to watch, it just, I, it, I don't know, I fell, I just kind of fell into the idea of it. Um, and I thought I would just do it for a hobby. I never really guessed it would go as far as it has. You know, I did, I, I started off a lot heavier, so I never really thought I'd see 145 pounds as a weight class for me either. So it's just been years of, of, of work and accomplishment. And you've had quite the career. Uh, you know, I was looking at your resume there. Uh, you actually have uh, two halves of the four horsewomen under your belt there. Uh, you got the amateur win over uh, Jessica Manduke, and then uh, you got the win over Marina Shafir. I got to ask, which victory was more satisfying between the two fights? You know, they both kind of had their own their own glitch, I guess. I mean, I think sat satisfying would probably have to be for the fight with Shafir because... I fought Jessamyn when she was just Jessamyn Duke. You know, she, she was an amateur. She was 145, and um, that was probably my highlight moment of my amateur years because I got my first championship belt. So, I mean, they both have their glory of all their own, but I think satis probably satisfying would be the Shafir one just because of the hype that was behind it and all the, the talk and I guess you could say the and the hype behind all the four horsewomen. So to be part of, you know, the hype that the person that shut that hype down is, has always, you know, been kind of cool, been kind of nice for me. Absolutely. And, and the win over Shafir is, uh, you know, part of a four and one run that you've gone on, uh, you know, since uh, you lost your, your first two professional bouts and, you know, no shame in that. A lot of fighters have lost their uh, pro debut, uh, you know, Henan Barrow, Forrest Griffin, just to name a couple. Um, you know, what has been the biggest difference from you from that fighter that made their professional debut and lost two straight to the fighter you are now? Even as of now, like after even after this fight, you know, I was I was preparing myself for a war. So to have seen, you know, my, that fight slip away because of my opposite opponent, you know, was cutting weight incorrectly, um, just it, it put me in a whole different kind of frame of mind when it comes to my work ethic. And between then and now, there there's it's just been a growth completely. Um, I've learned more about. Thing, you know things such as nutrition and weight cut and you know the and the difference of, of training enough and training too much so it's just been there's been a lot of change i've gone through a couple different coaches and finally settled home here in, in one solid area where i have a coach that knows who i am who who's studied me throughout the years that we the couple years we've been together and has helped me grow has helped me grow immensely so it's just it, it's it's been just a lot of change so I guess I can say I've just I've matured in a lot of senses, and I I was even kind of thinking about you know just this current situation that I fell into, and whenever I'm at my regular nine to five job, whatever I do, I'm usually known as one of the better employees. So I even thought the same thing about this. You know why can't I be one of the best and better 145ers in the weight class of Invicta, you know, I'm one of the better employees usually at my regular job, then I should be here too, so. Absolutely, okay, yeah, I, I totally hear what you're saying there, I, you, met, you keep mentioning your job, what do you do for a living actually? Um, for the last, uh, since April of this last year, I've, I've been working for a company um, somewhere out here in Oregon that makes cargo trailers, and um, I actually was uh, able to pick up welding uh, working at this job, so I been to have been doing that since uh, it's been a, it's been a few months now actually. Um, and then I was practicing over the course of that time from April on till now, and was able to get myself into the shop. So I'm a welder in during the day. And and how how is that uh, you know balancing the the, the work of welding uh, along with your training and everything? Um, it's been a heavy load. I mean, it's 
I, but it's kind of interesting because of the you know just how how and what an intense job it is. I kind of more or less get my strength and conditioning in the, in the beginning of the day because of just the skill that I throw around all day long. So that's kind of fun. Um, but I still. I'm able. I'm able to get my training in just fine. I actually, my coach Derek, who came with me to the Blast Invicta, um, he's my wrestling coach, and we live together. Me, him, and another friend, so we're all roommates. And we turned our garage into, you know, a small gym with weights and mats and some bags and stuff. So when I, you know, and he's also got a boxing gym in South Salem, uh, down where I live. So I can either go to his boxing gym or I can sp- split it up and go to animals or if like I'm exhausted from work and can't make it, he and I will work out in the nighttime in the garage and that's kind of where I get my one-on-one. So it's it's interesting. I have my, my training available in different corners of it all. So it, it hasn't, if anything, I've been working out more. I was, to this last fight camp, I was getting up at like 3.45 in the morning and just hitting mitts and working out with him um, and then be done before 4.30, get ready for work and go to work, get off work, go train a couple hours in the night, and that's what my training camp was for, for the most of the time. So, yeah, it's, so it's, 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 been, it's, it's been easy getting to and from practice and doing what i got to do now that I have more options available to me. Well, it sounds like you're really good with time management, and I mean, that's obviously essential, uh, you know, for, for having the two jobs. Uh, you know, the fact that you are a welder, and, and you know, I, welding pays pretty well from what I hear. Um, does it does it kind of take off some of the financial stress of being a fighter? Um, this job isn't one of the best paying ones out there. <laughs> okay. So, I wouldn't, so, I mean, it's and it's like kind of off of a, uh, um, of a production rate, so uh, that's... It, it it does it is nice having a job you know that does pay well and it is not like I said some of the best that I know that are out there for welders but it gets it gets me it, it gets me a good paycheck and you know having kind of seen the financial thump from this last you know situation that occurred it's yeah. at least I still have you know a good job that I'm falling back on so it helps it helps you know I don't really know any fighters that don't work and if they do they've made their success you know in one way or another or they their families own their gym and and that helps and that's their job you know everybody's different but i'm one of the few that works a nine to five <laughs> no good, good on you and i think that's great and and you know obviously uh you know you got everything kind of balanced out let's talk about the invicta fc uh, fiasco that that happened um when did you know that that matchup was potentially in jeopardy was it right at the weigh-ins or did you know beforehand it was in the morning um friday morning um my partner and i were just waking up and someone tried calling me in my hotel room, and I didn't answer the phone. <laughs> and then I so I picked up my cell phone, and uh, my manager said, "Call me back. I need to talk to you." Um, and that's from there where I heard that India was in bad shape, and she was throwing up, and they had the medics in her room, and just things were looking really. It basically, told me to stop cutting. If you're cutting right now, stop cutting. I'm like, I just woke up. It was like 8:30 in the morning, and I was like, I don't know what's going on. So I went up to the Invicta office and. They said, yeah, we're looking, Shannon, I don't, they don't know if they're going to allow her to fight because she's in bad shape, and the chance of it becoming a catchweight, you know, they talked about doing that, a catchweight at 150, or, I mean, you know how Shannon is about the girls making weight, Shannon and Julie both are pretty strong on that, on that whole situation, so it was looking slim to none, but I, I still kind of kept my head in the game, and was just hopeful for it, but it was around like 10, 1030 that I went up to the office, and they, they pulled the fight, so it, we didn't even make it to the scales. <laughs> oh, that's too, I mean, yeah, it's, it's so unfortunate. Has this has this type of situation ever happened to you to, uh, in your career before, whether it's amateur or professional? I've never gotten so close to the fight and had it pulled like that, so it really derailed me. It, I didn't like I didn't like the way it felt. I was crying, and I told Julie this feels this feels worse than losing. <laughs> so, yeah, it just it I just didn't like it, and I've I've yeah I've never had someone pull out of a fight. I've had people pull out of fights like weeks before, but never gotten like to the show, two weigh-ins and all the media stuff done. And then bang, sorry, but your opponent can't make weight. And I, that's, yeah, that sucks. That really sucked to get that close and just, nope, you're not. I just felt so like pulled, separated from the show completely. It sucked. Did you get financially compensated at all for the fight? I did. I still, uh, you know, I, I still got, uh, you know, I still got some help on that end. Okay, well, that's good at least. 
Has Invicta given you any indication as to uh, when you can fight next? I know there's that card uh, potentially in March uh, that, that's going to be happening. Is that kind of what you're looking at at this point? Yeah, well, I know the March card's already been made. So if they haven't discussed a contract with me already, there's no way. I mean, they wouldn't get thrown it on me that close in. Um, the, um, as far as the fights go, um, they, I don't even – they haven't really even said anything about the next LA card, which actually I'd like to be on that one mostly because it's a lot, it's a little further out. Um, but as far as this March one goes, um, if there are any featherweight fights, um, they basically, you know, told me that if one of them for some reason falls off or gets injured or so forth, I'm going to be the first one that they call. I said, all right, well, then I'll stay ready. So it doesn't guarantee me a fight, but that's, that's about the answer I got right now. <laughs> Well, let me ask you this. I know in the past Invictus let other fighters uh, who are under contract go and take other fights with other organizations. Is that an option you have? I've actually been meaning to talk to my manager and uh, ask if we can, you know, and even to my coach and see if maybe there's anything out there. Um, it's, yeah, because I know Shannon is really open to that as long as she approves the person and the, the event. She'll let you do it. Um, so that's a potential option. Then just got to ask. <laughs> Well, I was going to bring it up because I'm up here in Canada. Charmaine Tweet actually has another fight booked, uh, you know, in March as well. So that that's what kind of made me think of it. So, uh, yeah, hopefully, I mean, at the very least, you know, hopefully you get a fight pretty soon because uh, obviously very un unfortunate circumstances and, and uh, obviously want to keep active. Uh, let me ask you this. Is there anyone in particular you'd like to fight next? You know, they asked me the same question on the podcast. And I guess I'm kind of taking it as it comes at me because it's getting to that point where, I'm climbing, you know, it's, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting in better shape. I'm getting to a better point in my career where, you know, there are other girls that are coming up the ladder, but I'm sitting in a part where people are, you know, putting the note on me. They're like, well, what about you fighting cyborg? And I, you know, I'm very optimistic about it, but I'm cautious about it because I want to gain enough experience to take that fight and have it be a good, a good fight, you know, just not run in there without the experience. So, I mean, Depend they've they've offered me Megan Anderson, um, even this Ibragamova uh, gal who just fought Cyborg and lost, you know. So there's there's some that are on the chain right now that I could that I could go for that will keep you know help me boost up, get the experience that I need, and you know make that 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 last step because you know I really think it could happen a lot. It's gonna happen a lot sooner than it is later. So I mean there's. I could rematch Faith Fun doing, and you know I would like to have my rematch with Charmaine at some point in time too. And she's just coming back from a loss, so you know she's probably kind of kind of doing the same thing I'm doing and just wanting some fights. So I'm not really pinpointing anybody particularly. There's plenty of 145ers for me to fight at this point that are kind of in in the same bracket that I am, and it's getting to that to that point where it's kind of you know it's now or never <laughs> to take to go up against Cyborg for that belt. So. We'll see what happens. Well, we certainly look forward to it when you return to the cage. Amanda, I want to thank you so much for joining me here on the program. Uh, just remind my audience where they can find you on social media and give any thank yous or shout outs. The floor is yours. Oh, thank you. So, um, to all my fans, you can find me on a Facebook, uh, facebook.com for my uh, fan page. It's uh, the Lady Killer, uh, the Lady Killer uh, zero zero. Um, my Twitter handle is actually the same thing at the Lady Killer zero zero, and Instagram is um, the Lady Killer MMA zero zero. Um, and uh, I just want to say thank you to my manager, uh, Jason Nellis, for all his help and everything he's done. Um, Shannon, Julie, and Angie Linlin, everybody from Invicta, um, they, they did great things for me regardless of the circumstances of this fight. So thank you, ladies, for, for having my back on that. Uh, for all my sponsors, I want to say give a shout-out to uh, Training Mask, Future Legend, Uni Kennels, um, and uh, also a big thank you to Tracy from Affliction. Um, he gave me a big old shopping spree when I was down in LA, so that was really nice of him. And big shout out to him, the guys from MMA Overload, who do all my printing. Uh, Doc Howie of Zionics, um, Tony, Tony and Janet Darcy of US and Crane and Hoist. So everyone, thank you, and um, to everybody who uh, bought one of my shirts. Uh, the printing should be done, and everyone will think everything should be coming out in probably about the next couple of days. So have patience; your shirts are on the way.